Let's take a look at some charts on Litecoin for the latest article on Brave New Coin. So Litecoin had its halving on August 7th. It is a proof of work network. It uses script as its consensus algorithm. It's basically Bitcoin with script in the algorithm and 4x everything else. So it's 4x supply. And that means block times of two and a half minutes instead of 10 minutes. So since the halving for Litecoin, it's just kind of been downhill, which isn't great from a mining perspective because that means the miners who have a higher overhead cost or have higher electricity costs can no longer afford to mine Litecoin. And it's kind of an issue when there aren't many other script coins. There's Monocoin, there's Dogecoin, but there's nothing substantial in my mind other than really Doge that might like hold its value. So to see price fall again and make a lower low, the mining stuff post having is again under a large amount of stress because mining profitability just continues to push all-time lows or sitting at all-time lows. And I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but the commits for Litecoin on the main GitHub visibility, you know, contributors stuff, there's only one person, Adrian Gallagher, who sort of merges the Bitcoin stuff, the updates after they're tested or whatnot. They're also working on extension blocks and Mimble Wimble, which is a privacy thing for Litecoin. I don't think that's going to be necessarily massively bullish for the coin going forward when it does happen uh, for Litecoin. I think extension blocks and Mimble Wimble, specifically extension blocks, is more risky than it's worth because in an extension block, anything can happen as far as the consensus side is sort of a black box. So there's issues there. But nonetheless, it's not completely dead from an innovative innovation standpoint. Looking at transactions and average transaction values, you can see transactions have essentially ranged from 20 to 40K ever since early 2018. This massive spike was because the Bitcoin network was clogged, as well as just general bubble bullishness. And average transaction values really haven't you know, done anything crazy as far as an analysis perspective. They're just sort of ranging, which is fine. You know, this is going to go up and down with coin value as well. This is average block size, the line here, and fees. So you can see that even with fees, or even with block size slightly increasing recently, again, mainly because the BTC side has been clogged. So if BTC is clogged and you can send LTC in two and a half minutes, and it's quicker and it's cheaper, there's no reason not to just use it as a medium of exchange temporarily if you're trying to get stuff off an exchange or get anything onto an exchange. Other than that, you know, I don't expect the block size of the fees to increase anytime soon. There isn't like a sustained demand for LTC here. It's just sort of the spillway, the emergency uh, valve protection. You know, that's what happened here as well in uh, January 2018. So the line here is NVT, the inverse metric of economic utility on the chain, and daily active addresses. Again, addresses spiked January 2018. Hasn't really ever come close to that since. Active addresses, you know, they're ranging. They're not ultra bearish. They're certainly up from yearly lows. But again, there's no like sustained, you know, compare this to like Tezos, for example. There's no sustained month over month, week over week increase in active addresses. You, you just don't see it here. Uh, NVT recently hit all-time highs. Ultra bearish just means it's way overvalued for the economic utility of the chain. That's since come down as the market cap has come down. But overall, it's still you know way above historic averages for NVT as far as economic utility is concerned. So to me, this is just says, you know, no one's using this chain. It's overvalued. <laughs> Uh, looking at MVRV, however, it's in a historic buy zone area. So this is just market cap divided by realized cap. And historically, the buy zones have been below 0.5. The sell zones have been above 2.5, something like that. And as it enters the historic buy periods, there may be people just buying it you know, simply on this metric, for example. Not unheard of. Certainly the most bullish metric I can point to for LTC currently. This is the hash rate and the difficulty on the network. Again, it's 
basically at multi-year lows. This goes back to October 2017. So it's kind of wiping out any of the ASICs that added to the network since January 2018, especially after having. So having was here, and it's just been straight down. And again, price crept up a little bit, and then it price dropped dramatically. Hash rate's going to keep coming down until price finds an equilibrium. So if we look at daily returns for LTC or anything recently, um, it's been massively in the red, a historically bad period for crypto across the board price-wise. For LTC, it's certainly within the realm of, you know, worst days ever, but there's been plenty of other uh, daily returns that haven't been as volatile as LTC has over the past two weeks. So as far as technicals, this is the open interest on Bitfinex. Green is long, red is short. This is the volume profile of the visible range where volume is at specific price. This is volume for the specific day. This is the green is the 50, red is the 200, and this is the relative strength index, the RSI. I mainly just look at this for extremes or things like bullish or bearish divergences. So a higher high in price, a lower high in momentum. So I don't see any divergences currently. You know, certainly the daily RSI is also at a historic low. You know, the last time it was even close to this was probably late 2018 when it made in made this uh, low here. Here's an example of a bull div. So you get a lower low on higher momentum. So that would be something I would be looking for here to confirm a bottom. Right now, a bottom is far from confirmed. There's certainly plenty of support around the 25 zone. It's at around 35 right now. Um, but again, I'm looking for that that no doubter, lower low on uh, price, higher low on RSI, that sort of thing. The trend metrics are going to be all over the place because price has flipped completely in a month, just pulled a 180. So of course, there's going to be a death cross on essentially everything across the board for crypto. And as far as OI is concerned, longs have certainly come off since earlier in the year. And if we go lower, they'll continue to come off. Uh, shorts haven't really done anything, you know, since mid-2019. I think in general, LTC is one of the lighter traded coins just across the board. So until it's like moving by itself, like it did in early uh, 2019, it, it sort of led the charge as far as leading uh, the entire market out of the uh, the bear trend here. Uh, until we sort of see that for Litecoin, I don't expect many strong crypto-wide signals to come out of LTC. Looking at the cloud, again, if we're bullish, we want it above the cloud. If we're bearish, we want it below the cloud. We're currently way bearish. We are pretty far away from the key June here, this red line. Anytime that happens, price is going to want to return to the key June eventually, or the key June will meet with the price. So if this doesn't make a lower low, the odds increase greatly that we'll return to the key June here at 55. And again, since having, it's just been, <laughs> just been a bloodbath. This is LTC BTC. It actually made three year lows. This goes back since 2017. Uh, three year lows ish on that drop, probably just because the books are thin. I mean, there's not a lot of volume support if it continues to fall below the cloud, below the 200. It never made the bullish 5200 cross, although it was above the cloud. So, retrospectively, you know, looking for the next bull run, you definitely want to be certain that there's a, a bullish. Uh, 5200 here. You can say that 5200 on a daily is too slow for alts, fine, but you know what? It would have saved you here if you were paying attention to it. Um, upside support or upside resistance definitely around this 8500 or 0085, whatever that is, uh, and the pivot here, but I don't expect that anytime soon. But overall, you're just watching for these uh, lows to get retested if they are. As far as a capitulation standpoint, that massive wick. Is definitely something you want to see. You want to see price drop quickly and then people buy it up. You want to see it get rejected. This may have been just like algo bots arbing the LTC BTC pair. You know, like if if it's out of whack with LTC USD and BTC USD markets, then the bots will just buy it up, you know, blindly. This isn't necessarily people saying, oh God, <laughs> look how cheap LTC BTC is. It's probably more algo related than anything. But nonetheless, it's it's there, it's on the chart. It's not going to disappear. Uh, arguably, you could watch for uh, inverted head and shoulders, but that's got weeks to form at this point. Um, but again, you definitely want price above the cloud to have a shot at 
any bullish rally from here.